living beings first wanted to travel from one place to another, they moved in water. It was there where life was generated and where the first locomotion systems appeared. We could think water is an anti-natural and alien space for man. However, our first nine months of life are spent submerged. This is the reason why large water masses fascinate and attract human beings so much that we can't keep from returning to them. Although this time, equipped with designs and techniques, learned from those who know the liquid element better, from those that are born, live and die in it. Marine fauna have only two possibilities to travel. To be carried away at the whim of ocean currents, or to swim in their freely chosen direction. The ancestral jellyfish is not a swimming champion. It takes advantage of underwater currents in its wandering, and its primeval contractions let them change their direction, upwards or downwards, to find nourishment. Some jellyfish have reached a wonderful association with colonies of microalgae that live within their tissues. When the jellyfish turns over, the algae receive the sunlight and turn the sun's energy into nourishment for its partner, its vessel. In fact, the animal transports the plant in exchange for food. Members of the plant kingdom can't move by themselves so they must resort to hired transportation. They have populated the whole world in this way, both underwater and on land. In fact, sometimes it's animals, the wind or the sea, that have helped plant seeds to cover every bit of land, even the smallest island. The biggest difficulty was probably crossing the ocean. The seeds of coconut palms hold the world record for long distance sailing although without any specific direction. Coconuts never know where they will arrive. A coconut never sinks. It's not as dense as water, and its spherical shape displaces a large volume of water. Besides, air is locked inside the coconut. In reality, it's a raft with watertight compartments. There's no doubt that after watching a coconut float, humans got many ideas of how and with what materials to make a boat to sail the sea. Coconuts even have their own keels for forward progress, but they don't have our propelling devices. Floating coconuts don't use energy, and their wood and fiber materials are long-lasting. Wandering like nomads, they may be at sea for years before arriving on dry land. Other plants have imitated the coconut's floating technique for other purposes. They found a permanent home on the water. Floating vegetation lives on a few square meters stolen from the river and has created an ecological system that is stable enough, although it does shift around a bit. Aquatic plants float because they are not as dense as water. 
but some of them have incorporated inner air bubbles as a safety device in case of turbulence. The best adapted plants have large air chambers to avoid sinking. This species' visible buoys turn it into an unsinkable platform. Locked in air means buoyancy. Despite being born in water, many amphibious species do not manage well in an aquatic environment. Toads, in fact, live much longer on dry land than in their temporary breeding pools. Their legs and their movements have adjusted to walking. They dive into water so rarely that when they have to cross a spring or a pond, they must resort to childish techniques so they don't sink too much when swimming. In water, they're not ashamed to use their self-inflatable floater. Although it's disguised between their legs, this air chamber is a good safety device and they don't drown. Their life buoy lets them rest and catch their breath until they're strong enough to continue crossing such a large barrier. Their hind legs have webbed feet and they remember the technique they used when they were tadpoles although the adult weighs a lot more. Swimming on the surface with air-filled floats is much easier, and it's a good resort for those individuals that can't or don't want to run any risks over long distances. Floating is only the first step to conquering liquid surfaces. The ability to walk on the water without getting wet is a much more complex achievement. Water striders do walk on water, literally. Such a feat is possible thanks to their size and also to their mastery of physics. Their success and their unsinkability are based on their taking advantage of the surface tension of water molecules. The surface of water, especially when it's calm, resists being entered, just like any solid body. It puts up less resistance, but it does resist. Those who have plunged into a swimming pool without thinking know that well. The water strider takes advantage of the same principles to stand on water. They live on calm waters, and their legs are covered with fine hairs that enable them to glide on their environment without penetrating the wet surface. They create a little liquid hollow and are able to stand up without sinking, waiting for their prey or mate. Water skiing is the closest that man has got to walking on water. We use the same principle as the water striders, but we have to enlarge our support surface. But due to our body density, we have to maintain a certain speed as well. Otherwise, we would sink.